These guys are so close to getting it. But I do have a, a, a spot that I would like to reject. And I say this as a person that has seen success. Now, ICV2, this is the platform that has been historically responsible for, not historically, but as of recently, in com combination with Comicron, getting the numbers and trying to present the numbers for the comic book industry. However, uh, that is slowed down because as of what is April of last year, so almost a year, Diamond has not made their comic book numbers public. DC and Marvel are with Penguin Random House as well as Lunar. None of those guys make their numbers public. So to try to find what the numbers actually are is very difficult. Diamond doesn't have as much of the uh, stranglehold on the industry anymore. And again, even even so, they don't have their numbers public. But last year, for example, with the 2021 numbers that they came up with, you could see that ICV2 was absolutely part of it. Not saying this guy right here, because this is a columnist, this is a contributor that's saying this. I just want to let set the scene who ICV2 um, certainly is. Now, again, I've said many times before that people are holding their nose, acting like the crap don't stink when it actually does. It's right there. You can see it. It's a wad of crap right there in the corner of your room. But you have people that say comic books are booming when they actually are not. Uh, in comparison to previous years, if you even go back to 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, unit sales are down. Period. Manga, a lot of them take credit for that because of they consider that a graphic novel. And yes, there's been a price increase, but it, however, and I have to say this every video because you're going to get those who, who use those as excuses. Like, hey, look at the sales numbers. Well, there was a price increase, and also those sales, a big part of those sales are including uh, a manga. And on top of that, when you look at the actual landscape of the industry, definitely the genre that dominates is, is in a decline, which means the industry at whole is, a, is on a decline. See, what they're talking about right here, I see you too. Superhero comics are in a creative rut. Who, if anyone, will fly to the rescue? These guys are so close to getting it. But what I will not allow them to do is act like there's a problem that people have not seeing superhero comics. That's not what it is. It's just that the creativity and the enthusiasm isn't coming from the big two, period. That's in the superhero realm. There is a demand. There will always be a demand, particularly in uh, North America. And even so, I say this all the time with well, even manga, manga's um, uh, diversity in terms of their ideas are, are largely overstated. Yes, there are mangas on basically anything, but in the same respects, you can say that definitely with independent comics, there's comics on virtually anything. Oh, uh, you know, even if you go like French comics, European comics, there's comics based on everything, anything with the superhero stuff uh, being not the only thing that's being produced. However, the reason why I always say that that's overstated in terms of uh, manga's diversity, because there's a food manga or sports manga, what dominates the top is definitely the shonen stuff. What donates the top of the American charts, North American charts are not those, those. They're basically heroic stuff. There's a reason why uh, it's told in the Eastern style of storytelling. They have their own influence there, but it's, yeah, maybe not walking or going around in like tights and stuff or patrolling the cities, though some of those do exist as well. It's still their way of storytelling with heroes that are superpowered. This is the reason why Dragon Ball, for example, is probably the the first big like uh, introduction to a lot of, for a lot of us with uh, anime and manga, uh, the Japanese way, and it hit big. And even though a lot of people didn't even know, I remember growing up, people didn't know even think of that as like an, a Japanese thing. It was just really, really cool. Right. But you think of a character like Goku. I mean, he is a superhero, per se. Uh, again, it's just told in their way of storytelling. But with this right here. It says right here, um, it says top 50 comics. Not really a surprise. Spider-Man, Bat Batman stuff. Got a couple of turtle stuff. Retailers um, do these books have fans lather with excitement. Is everyone or anyone looking forward to upcoming events like Donna D.C.? No. You've done they, they've done the event thing over and over and over. You guys remember this. Why I say this so close to getting it. You guys remember I did a video talking about what the comic book industry is mis missing. The American comic book industry is missing is, is enthusiasm. They are unable to get enthusiasm from the audience. And it's a content problem. 
And part of that is, yes, the needless hashing out of uh, uh, rehashing of all these different types of events. DC is all among the worst of this. And Marvel does it as well. Event after event after event trying to get people stoked. Though hard numbers can be tough to figure out because they're not reporting them. Uh, reports are that sales are flat down dating back as uh, far as September. It's been dating back further than that. Recent data show superheroes are about to lose their place in the top selling uh, category in U.S. comics and graphic novels, something that frankly might end up being good for the medium, but is going to hurt the direct market that depends on reliable repeat customers for periodicals. Again, the diversity in the, the, the actual types of comics isn't a problem with the American situation. It's just that the one that's in the greatest demand, the genre that's in the greatest demand, that part of the industry isn't being filled. So just because they're going down, maybe people that are interested in other stuff or maybe not interested in other superhero stuff are going to read the books that they're already reading. Right. That's not helping your industry. You're, you're not supplying for the demand that's there. Supply and demand mismatch. There are there are too many books chasing not enough readers. I've made this point a million times. Even when I was still reading, hell, especially when I was still reading, you had to have the money that I had to keep up with your favorite characters. It's insane. Gimmick after gimmick, this character showing up here. You got three three Spider-Man books that are based on Peter Parker, another four, four to five based on some other Spider-Folk character. It's needless. Water down your product. I've said that many, many, many times. Still creative process. Not to disparage the hardworking men who make our comics month in and month out, but the sparks of imagination that was at work various points over the last 10 to 12 years seems fainter. Well, yeah, these guys suck. Editors with trained eye to spot potential breakout hits and talent and the industry left or uh, 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 have to get away, probably left, I guess, to get away or have to get away with it if they swing and miss once in a while. So they're opting to go, and I know he talks about this, opting to go for that, the long, the, the younger, uh, unproven and untalented uh, part of the market as opposed to getting veterans that absolutely know what they're doing. Also, you have media saturation. I've said this uh, time and time again. There's too much coming out. But the quality isn't good. See, you actually don't have the quantity issue if the quality is there. This only becomes like imagine people being like with anything else. Right. And, you know, you get these new mangas uh, coming out all the damn time. And nobody says, well, there's too many mangas coming out. Well, that's because a lot of them that are going on that aren't good. They end up stopping. Right. And the ones that are good, they keep doing. You can't have too much of it if it's good. You can't. You can't have too much of it if it's good. But if you're giving people mediocre or mundane or flat out bad material, then yeah, people don't want that. They're not interested. And that's when the oversaturation happens. It's bad. It's a con. It starts with the content problem. It's bad material. And it, 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 it's far better and far more preferable to condense it and make it better. So you have fewer titles across the board, even with the with the uh, other media, like like not comic books. Let's say uh, comic book based movies and stuff, animated or not, live action. You have less of those that are actually planned well and done well, produced well, and then you build from that. And if you want to make more material, as long as it's all right, at least or good, let's say that. People are going to flock to it. There's not a such thing as getting too much of, let's say, something that people want. And he thinks it's a passing squad. You know, you have like basically the boom and the bust and all that. They're close to getting it, but they ain't close enough. The thing is simply this. You have a content problem in media. Uh, entertainment really across the board, but comic book stuff. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and plug my own thing. There are those of us that aren't connected to the mainstream that garnered more enthusiasm than you guys have been able to do in the last years. And instead of saying, well, yeah, here's an example of somebody 
and a company getting people in more enthusiastic than we've seen in the recent year. This was the right here was the biggest story in comics. Whether you want to admit it or not is the biggest story in comics. And I'm not saying, not saying that to inflate my own ego here. I'm just giving you the facts. If it wasn't me and they did the same thing, it would be the biggest story in comics. If a guy uh, created his own company and with the first book did what it is that he did, that would be the biggest story in comics. But what did ICV2 do? What did their columnists do? What did CBR's columnists do? What did Comics Beat do? They knew it existed. They just chose to ignore it. Well, we don't have the right politics. We're not, we're, not, we're not with those guys. We're not aligned with those guys. CBR guys flat out admitted that. So you're not helping either. I'm not letting the media cats get off, get, get away with it as now people want to come around to the fact that, well, maybe there is something wrong with the industry. Well, you, you are part of it. You're part of the problem. And I'm not saying that highlighting it so we can get more money. I, oh, I want that, though. I would like the money. Uh, but you know, your coverage doesn't mean anything because we, there's other forms of media and we could get to skip the line. What I'm saying is, is that you're unable to show where the enthusiasm is coming from because you're clinging to the industry itself. And that has a, has an impact on everybody else, including the retailers. I don't know how y'all going to continue to stand. Well, yeah, I do know you're going to sell manga and games. That's how you're going to, that's how you're going to stand. That's how you have to stand. That's what you're going to do. But as you see, people aren't as interested in it. Well, I'll tell you what. Retailers, this, this is how you make money. You sell out. Just like every retailer that bought this bad boy, you sell out. So you want to make some money, come over to these guys that maybe you don't like and maybe you think differently. Uh, they think differently than you do politically or so on the, or in terms of their social views. But at least we're getting people enthusiastic about comics. And that's what it is that especially the superhero genre needs. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.